Hello and welcome to Big Orbit's Kaifa Vanguard weekly update. My name is James and today I'll be going through the cards shown throughout the past seven days. Starting off, we have the main grade three of the Oracle Think Tank trial deck, Hexagonal Magus. Her first skill is Auto Vanguard Circle 1 place. Cost Counterblast 1, look at the top two cards of your deck, put them on the top of the deck in any order and draw a card. Auto Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle, when your drive check reveals a trigger unit, this unit gets plus 5000 power until the end of the turn. Makes this new identity is looking at the top two cards of the deck and putting them back in any order, which is a nice theme with them changing the near future. And nicer still that they get to draw one of those cards with some of their skills. The on place skill could hurt against things like Murakumo, seeing as Murakumo have what been keeping Oracle Think Tank at bay for the time being, and Amaterasu's skill is an act, so she's generally the better against the matchup. But this skill is good for a trial deck boss and could work well as a budget option for your second grade 3 in an Oracle Think Tank deck. Seeing as you'll likely be getting lots of triggers in the Oracle Think Tank anyway, the second skill will help a lot, especially on Vanguard Circle where your opponent may be guarding for a lot more than usual for the fear of plus 30k power from your drive checks. For a mini version of Hexagonal Magus, we have Rectangle Magus. She's a grade 2 with Auto Rearguard Circle 1 place, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, pick the top 2 cards of your deck, put them on the top of the deck in any order, and draw a card, and Auto Rearguard Circle when your drive check reveals a trigger, this unit gets plus 5000 power until the end of the turn. So apart from the Soul Blast cast, this is basically the same card but as a different grade. I think this is going to see more play because of its grade though. Kuore Magus is a grade 1 with Auto Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle 1 place, Look at the top two cards of your deck, put them on the top of your deck in any order. It also comes with a reminder text that if you rode over Lozenge Magus, you may activate the abilities in any order. Meaning if you rode over a starting vanguard, basically you can decide to look at the top two cards of your deck and then draw, or draw then look at the top two cards of your deck. She's useful, but without the draw it seems her skill is missing something. But looking at the top for free is at least really good for Amaterasu to buff her up. On to non Magus cards, but still Oracle Think Tank, we have Wheel Crane, a grade 1 with auto rearguard circle. When you draw a card, cost put this unit into your soul, and two of your rear guards get plus 10,000 power if they're in the front row. It has a low base power, but I feel this could really help in Oracle Think Tank's certain matchups, like against Kagura and Murakuma, which could make them a huge threat against the meta if that is so, but we'll have to see. Miko of the Spirit Light, Kinuka, is a grade 2 with auto rearguard circle. When you draw a card, cost counterblast 1, and this unit gets plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. Yet more huge power, but counterblasts are getting a bit much in Oracle Think Tank now. Luckily they have Oracle Guardian Gemini to counter charge, but we will have to see what Pentagonal Magus is like, because if she is good and doesn't use counterblasts, then I can see a lot of these new cards having places in people's decks. Lastly for Oracle Think Tank in the trial deck, this week we have a backup grade 3 Miko of the Treasured Blade, Shizuki. It has Act, Rearguard Circle once per turn, cost counterblast 2 and cost Soul Blast 1. Draw a card and three of your units in the front row get plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. This is nice as it works on rear guard circle, but Counter Blast 2 is big for something that doesn't give the greatest of Oracle Think Tank skills. It is kind of a very, very small version of Victorious Deer, but you can use it a lot quicker. Onto Narukami, it has really been their week this week with a lot of high rarity cards from VPT03. Detonic Stinger Dragon is a triple R grade 3. It has auto vanguard circle rearguard circle when place, cost counter plus 1. Choose a rearguard in your opponent's front row, bind it, and this unit gets plus 5000 power until the end of the turn. And it also has auto when road upon, call this card to rearguard circle, and one of your vanguards gets plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. So you will get to bind two rearguards with this card after being rode over, which is a really good setup, but not a wise strategy against Murakumo seeing as they can prevent you that ride. The VR is Detonic's Drill Dragon. The two Detonic's cards work great together, as this has auto Vanguard Circle once per turn. When it attacks a Vanguard, cast Counter Blast 1, choose a rearguard in your opponent's front row and bind it. Cost discard the same number of cards as the number of your opponent's rearguards. At the end of the battle, stand this unit and it gets 1,000 power and minus 1 drive until the end of the turn. So Stinger Dragon will help you clear the field, but this worth only retiring the front row, you can be discarding 3 cards because of the back row with the restand ability, which would hurt a fair bit, but Narukami have been known to have a reckless playstyle. If your opponent does have that back row, then you only want to use this as a finisher, but a restanding vanguard in Excel is pretty powerful. To help the Donix Drill Dragon, we also have the Grade 1 Lizard Runner Ricky. His skill is Auto Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle when placed cost Soul Blast 1, this unit gets plus 3000 power until the end of the turn. You may swap all of your opponent's rearguards to the front and back row. This is a great way to get those back row units out of hiding, not only if they're just strong and rid of need get, but also to cheapen the cost of the Tonic Drill Dragon's restand ability. 
Ricky is a trial deck card, but we'll probably see a lot of play in Narukami decks. Lightning of Hope Helena is going to see a lot of play also. It's a grade 1 with auto rearguard circle once per turn. When your opponent's rearguard is bound during your turn, if you have no face up cards in your damage zone, cost Soul Blast 1 and counter charge 1. So far, this is the only counter charger we've seen for Narukami, and it's very needed. Nearly all of their cards counter blast to bind, so to continue their assault, they will definitely find a lot of use with Helena. Dragonic Death Scythe is another binding card with auto rearguard circle when placed, cost Soul Blast 2, choose a rearguard in your opponent's front row, bind it, and this unit gets plus 3000 power until the end of the turn. It's a fairly big Soul Blast cast, but it's using a resource that the rest of the binding cards don't use, which is useful. But there is already Ricky and Helena using the Soul. Death Scythe's second ability is continuous rearguard circle during the battle that it attacked a vanguard. If there are no rearguards in your opponent's front row of the same column as this unit, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. This means he is getting to 17k power on his own with the two abilities and 25k with an 8k booster. Rising Phoenix is an amazing little grade one. It's a double R with auto drop zone. When your opponent's rearguard is bound during your turn, you may call this card to rearguard circle. If you do, this card gets plus 3,000 power until the end of the turn. This makes for an amazing re reoccurring unit as one counter blasts for binding a unit can call up to four rearguards, which lets you save a lot of hand. And if you no longer want the card in the column it's in, you can ride over it and then bind another card to call this back to a rearguard circle that you prefer it to be in. Also, through binding one card, this unit and Helena's skills can activate at the same time, giving an amazing value. Dusty Plasma Dragon is a grade 2 with auto rearguard circle once per turn. When your opponent's rearguard is bound during your turn, you may give up to two of your rearguards in the same column as this unit plus 5000 power until the end of the turn. Yet another card that gains benefits from other cards' binding abilities, which is really stacking up well. This will give plus 10,000 power to a, to a full non axel column, which is really good for a free skill, but will only activate once per turn, so it shouldn't be too crazy unless the grade 1 has this ability. Demolition Dragon is grade 1 with continuous rearguard circle. If your opponent's front row has no rearguards, this unit gets plus 3,000 power, and it has auto vanguard circle. When its attack hits vanguard, draw a card. It's a grade 1 that has to hit, but calling 2 or 3 to axel circles can put a lot of pressure on your opponent to try and avoid you getting that draw, which would be a great advantage, especially with Detonic's Drill Dragon making you discard cards. Great Composure Dragon is the main grade 3 of the trial deck. Its skill is Auto Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle at the beginning of your opponent's battle phase. This unit gets plus 3000 power until the end of the turn for each open rearguard circle in your opponent's front row. If it is your turn, it gets plus 5000 power instead of 3000. It's likely that your opponent's front row will always be full in Force or Protect, but if if your opponent's front row is continuously being rebound, then Excel may not be able to fill all their circles all the time. So you get defensive buffs against Axel decks, making this a sort of anti axel Axel deck. Lastly for Narukami, with the Grade 2 Hammer Knuckle Dragon. The skill is auto is act circle rearguard circle cost count plus two, choose a rearguard in your opponent's front row, bind it, and this unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. High cost, but okay as an act. For this to see play, Narukami would need a lot of counter charging support. For promo cards, we have Star Rush Wizard, a grade two for Oracle Think Tank. He has auto rearguard circle when you draw a card, cost, retire this unit, and counter charge one. Another counter charger for Oracle Think Tank will help their new cards a lot, as they already had Oracle Guardian Gemini to counter charge as well. There were a few images of upcoming cards that are going to appear in VBT03. They are blurry, but we have Sourceman of Explosive Flames Palamedes for Royal Paladin. His old skill was a bit boring with just gaining power if you had a certain amount of grade threes. But I assume he will be a high rarity card in the new set, so hopefully we will have a more interesting skill for him. Oracle Think Tank have Stella Magus coming up. For a long time she was the best Magus card back in the day, allowing you to draw if you predicted the card correctly, or counts charging if you predicted it wrongly. Seeing as all the Magus cards so far are letting you scry, with a couple letting you draw as, as well, I can see this going down the counter charging route more for its new form to be a bit different from the others. Flame Wind Lion Wonder Ezel will be coming for Gold Paladin. He came pretty late into the game originally, only arriving in GP tier 7, so it's interesting to see him this early, but his old skill allowed you to superior ride Ezel cards. If this can ride Ezel cards on top of Ezel cards, it would allow you to accelerate the amount of gifts you were getting, as if golds weren't accelerating enough already. And finally, we have Nupatama's Stealth Dragon Magatsu's Gale. Now, originally he was a Murakumo unit, but he was also part of a ride chain. 
So it would be really nice to give this unit a pseudo right chain ability as Megatsu Storm is the main grade 3 in set. It would also be nice to see Megatsu Breath and Megatsu Wind too. Maybe to give a similar theme to Ezel as an accelerating vanguard for protect, acting as sort of a ninja ambush. And that is everything for this week. Be sure to check out next week when I'll be going through the card showing throughout the next 7 days and let me know your feelings on the new cards. We saw a lot of Narukami and Oracle Think Tank today, this is Narukami's first set so let me know how you feel about the new Narukami cards. Detonix isn't just killing everything like he used to, he is now binding uh, select things so that is an interesting change. And a restander as well, we haven't seen many of those in the V series really so it is good to have only a few but when they do appear it's a bit more exciting. So I hope to see you next time. Bye.